I will start recording this class and I hope that you help me from home and you with the guys from here, obviously you're gonna help me out with the class. So I just wanna finish the class about saints. Let me share um, the screen with you. Where is it? It's here. Saints. In the previous class, in the previous class, like I said, uh, we studied the lesson. We also reflect on this quotation. Uh, we read the characteristics of saints. I gave you some examples, but we're gonna finish with the examples here. I think, I think that we went through them, but I did not record, and I want you to remember the meaning of these sayings. In here, we have the saying, and down below we have the meaning. We will try to give some practical examples of the usage of saints. Maybe Milena Rivera can help me reading the first. Milena, can you hear me? Yes. First, the last throw that broke the came Camel, so it's a camel. Yeah, the number one. No. The last straw that broke the camel's back. The final problem is a series of problems. Uh huh. Thank you so much. So you could hear the saying, the last straw, or the full version. You have the short version, the last straw, or the last straw that broke the camel's back. Well, at the end, let's say, let's say, um, Jair, Rair. So imagine that Jair is a very unpunctual person. He's always late. So no matter what happens, he's never on time. He's always late. So, but one day you have an important presentation for the school and Jair arrives late. And you said, hmm, enough is enough, my friend. Uh, this is the last time. This is the last straw that broke the camel's back. It's the final problem of a series of problems. The series of problem is that he's always late. But the final problem is that he also comes or arrives late in an important day. And what is more important than a school project? Nothing in, in your lives. So this is a, um, an explanation or an example, a practical example of the last straw that probably handles back. Let me see the second one. And now you're gonna give me some examples or also you can use the adaptation in Spanish for this one. Ah, by the way, what is the adaptation in Spanish for that one? For the one who broke the camel's back or the last straw that broke the camel's back. What can be the Spanish version? Uh -huh, exactly, that's the one. For this one, for this one, I don't think I don't think we have a specific saying in Spanish, or at least I don't know. I don't know. But um, Guillermo Velasco is gonna help me. Hi, Guille. Can you unmute your microphone? Can you? Hi, teacher. Hello. Read the second one, please. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let the cat let the cat out of the bag. Yeah, meaning uh, <laughs> to share information that was previously con uh, what pronounce this word? Concealed. Concealed. Thank you. Daniela Paola Velasco. I, I don't remember if you were here in the classroom when we were reading this saying. Yeah, I was there. Yeah, right. Yeah. So can you uh, tell me with your own words, what does okay. it mean? The let the cat out of the bag. Yeah. That mm, is like, I don't know, saying things that you were not gonna say, but like someone is asking you to tell them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you reveal information that has been classified, right? Thank you. Andrea Nicole Clemente, can you unmute your microphone, Clemente? 
if you can't, if you can't, uh, just let me know by a reaction. You know, the reaction is in the menu. There's one that means yes, and there's one another that means no. Okay, you can't. Thank you, Andrea Nicole. Cesar Guzman. Hello. Hello. Help me with number three and number four, please. Uh, read. Please. Three and four. Three and four. Once in a blue moon happens very uh, rarely. Uh -huh. And speak of the devil, this expression is used when the person you have just been talking about is arrived. Thank you so much. Diego Batres. Batres Diego. Are you there? Give no. me a sign. Ah, okay, I see you're here. Diego Batres. Um, yep. Okay, can you give me a, a practical example when you said hmm, it happens once in a blue moon? Um, once in a blue moon. Let me think. I, I didn't get you. Can you repeat that, please? I uh, said if you can let me think for a second, please. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Got it. So while my dear Moises is thinking, I'm going to give you an example of a speak of the devil. Say that you are trash talking on, on Valentin's back. So this is this is not really happened, right? So nobody trash talk about Valentin, especially on his back, because this is it's not polite. You see. Okay, but just just a case. Um, it happens. And then suddenly he arrives, he comes in the middle of the conversation, and you said, ah, I speak of the devil. You see, what might be the adaptation in our language for that one? Why oh, you got it? Say it louder. Do you remember? Jair, Valentin? Mm, yeah, yeah, I know. But but in Spanish, in Spanish, you have a, you have this expression. Uh -huh. Exactly, exactly, exactly. That's the one. Uh -huh. mm, the the Roman. So they don't say that. They say, mm, let's pick up the devil. And then he comes. Uh, are you ready, Moy? Yeah, I was thinking, and like, suppose you have a student that never, never, never like do something in time, like in station for some day, and he never did it in time. Uh -huh. So, by a miracle, one occasion, he did that thing on time. That's what I thought about. Uh -huh. and, and actually, and actually, this is the expression we use in Spanish, right? What a miracle, you see? Because it never happens. We are used that these things never happen. So I will come back to Jair's example. But Jair is always late. But one day, just one day, it, it happens that he is on time. And when that happens, you said mm, it happens once in a blue. So then let's move to five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, maybe here, uh, my dear uh, Daniela, tell me please, with number five. Mm -hmm, this guy. Uh-huh, and six, uh, M -M -E. Merari. I was going to say Emily. Is Merari, Merari, number six. Yeah, thank you. Seven, um, my dear Valentin, seven. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. And the last one, uh, my dear Jair. By guns, by guns. Okay, thank you. Blessing in disguise is when the, at, at first maybe you are going through difficult um, situations in life, but behind, behind all of that, there's a benefit for you, but you don't recognize it at first. Curiosity kill the cat is easy to interpret. It's exactly the same thing in Spanish. Give the benefit of the doubt. Is when you believe in someone without no proof. So in, in last class, last class, I, I provided the, the example of the politicians, you know. In, in my case, I trust no politician. I did not, I do not believe in any politician. And someone might say, no, teacher, don't be so hard on them. Give them the benefit of the doubt. But but I'm not that kind of I'm not the kind of man that give the benefit of the doubt, at least not to politicians. And then let bygones be bygones is to forget about what has passed. If someone has offended you, if someone has offended you, uh, you have to forgive and also to forget. You see, what happened before is part of the past. So let bygones be bygones. And then uh, let's move to the new the new talk. Share. So that way we finish. Oh, it says nine grade. Is eleven. It's eleven. So uh, you have to open your books, page sixty-six. Your English ID, page sixty-six. Sixty-six, sixty-six, sixty-six. You don't have it, oh. But don't worry, because I'm gonna present it here, and you can. Well, you can work together, but I, I will help. You. I will help. You. And we have a quotation to reflect. Last week, last week we were kind of not celebrating, but at least uh, trying to point out the importance of the environment. You see, to go green campaign, and all that kind of thing. Uh, I didn't do it, so I'm gonna do it now. <laughs> Let's go green. Maybe Mireli, Mireli Resinos. Can you open your microphone, Mireli? Or just give me a sign? Yes, I can. Okay. Can you help me please reading the quotation, Go Green, please? Read, please. Go green, say not all plastic to make your life fantastic. Say yes to all a cool green to make her beautiful green. Thank you. Yeah, also, it's like a poem, it rhymes. Maybe someone can tell me, what do you think about going green? Going green. But I think, what do you think? Why it is important to go green? Waste. Waste. 
Okay, thank you. So do you know, do you know then this is a fact, this is a fact um, that some studies here in El Salvador have shown that we're gonna have the capability of providing water for 10 years from now. After 10 years from now, there won't be water, enough water to supply to Salvadorian homes. And I think, and I think, well, I'm sure that you have faced that situation in certain neighborhoods. In Soyapango, Ilopango, some neighborhoods uh, spend weeks, uh, months without receiving the water service. So, and according to this uh, study that I'm talking about, in 10 years from now, there won't be enough water to supply to the population. And, and, and that is serious. That is a serious thing. So how can we live without water? And so that means that water prices are going to raise to the sky. See, now water is not that expensive. I mean, the bills are from $6 to 25 or 30 monthly, depending on the size of your house and the consuming that you, you, you have. But it's a terrible situation that you really need to consider. Let me see, maybe Cynthia, Cynthia Lorelei Maltes. Can you talk, Cynthia? Cynthia. If you can't, leave me a, a reaction. Ah, you can't. Thank you. Uh, what about Julissa Araceli? Can you talk? Or just give me a sign? Yes. Okay. Okay, tell me, Julie, um, something about the importance of going green to protect the environment. Mm, okay, uh, we have to be kind with the planet because it's our home and it's the only one and uh, we have to be kind, you know, with the plastic, all this stuff, reducing for our life, eco green, you know. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You have mentioned two of the three uh, magical words with letter R. Reduce, reuse, and recycle is the other one. Okay, thank you. So now let's move to, to the topic. Book page 66. I think it's 66, but let me check. Mm -mm -mm. Ah, you can do this. Sixty-six or so. Oh no, it's not page sixty-six. It's sixty-two. Page sixty-two. Page sixty-two. Last, last turn, we uh, went over this topic. Uh, we want to review this again. It's about favorite TV shows. We discussed a little bit of these exercises in theory are already completed. If you don't have them completed, shame on you. Let me see the first question, the first question and answer. Moi, can you read the first question for us, please? Uh, which one like uh, like uh, over the, the the first one like over yeah, the yeah, five, yeah. last five years do you think tv and radio shows have gotten better or worse why what do you think uh, i don't see much 
be myself, so I can't talk about it. Okay, you don't watch much TV. What do you do in your free time then if you don't watch TV? Um, uh, or do I sleep or do I play? <laughs> okay. And what about you, Valentin? What do you think? Uh, has television become better or worse? Worse. worse. Why? Uh, more specific. Okay. I respect your opinion. Yeah, Has television gotten better or worse? You, you don't watch much TV. Okay. Uh, Merari, number one. So exactly. And that means that you're growing old. When you grow old, you start seeing everything uh, with more criticism. You, you, you have more elements, more criteria, and now you can decide either to watch it or not, and what is good and what is bad. Yeah, that's good. My dear Daniela, what do you think? Is television getting better or worse? Worse, worse. why? <laughs> it was not what they say. So there, there is something there is something that, that I consider is true and it's a reality in, in, in movies, televisions, and also in literature. Uh, creativity has run out. Creativity has run down, run out. And why I'm saying this, I think that all of the ideas, all of the creativity has been there. Everything has been created so far. So there has been thousands of years of literature, hundreds of years in movie production. And I said the hundred because movies are very old. Uh, I don't remember exactly the date of the oldest movie ever filmed, but it's more than, yeah, but it's more than a hundred years ago. So my point here is that the activity has run out. So what Hollywood is doing now is to reboot, to what is the other word? Uh, remake, uh, they're remaking everything. It's because they have no more ideas. They have the technology to create uh, imagery. The imagery is important, visual effects. But the plot, the content of those stories mm -mm, is not the same. So just for you to recall, uh, and I said recall because we did this exercise before going on vacation. So this TV show right here is called A Small Wonder. So it's number four. The second picture here is Alf. And is number two. Number three, or the third picture right here, is the Jerry Springer show. Is number six. This one here is um, My Mother the Car. The picture showing these creatures, this is like Batman like custom is manimal, manimal. This one for sure is Barney, Barney and France. And this one right here is a mystery, this one. This show right here is a mystery. We have no idea what the show name is and what is it about. So I don't know, but I know because I have uh, taught this class before but you don't know. Let's move to the next page to find it out. 
um, exercise E. You're gonna listen to a TV critic talking. A TV critic is gonna be talking about a show in the extra picture, the one that I show you. And you have to answer questions one, two, three, and four. Uh, help me, uh, Daniela, with the questions, please. Read the questions. Thank you so much. Now listen and find it out. Audio 6.5. Right, and that brings us to our next show in today's Worst of the Worst list. Can't wait. Well, our next show is one of the trashiest ever produced. If you're over 30, you might actually remember this one. It's called Cop Rock, and... You mean cop as in policeman? Yep, Cop Rock, and aired on ABC in the late 80s. No, 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 make that early 90s. 1990, actually. I wouldn't remember it. I was still a baby. <laughs> yeah, right. Anyway, Cop Rock is about a group of policemen who, are you ready for this? Sing and dance while they're at work arresting criminals and keeping the city safe. Kind of like Glee, you know, but with cops instead of high school students. TV Guide actually named it one of the worst shows ever. And honestly, I'm not surprised. Singing Cops, come on. How many episodes were there? Well, it lasted a whole season, actually. ABC spent a lot of money on Cop Rock, and they really wanted it to succeed. But I guess America wasn't ready for singing and dancing cops. Okay. So to check the answers, um, I'm gonna play the game with the guys in here. We're gonna play the supermarket. But this game for me never gets old. I really like to play it. Um, do you remember the supermarket? I think, I think that we played it at least once last year. No? Supermarket game? No? no? Okay, this game consists of this. I will, I will be telling you a fictional story, something that did not really happen to me. And every time, and every time that I mention a keyword, a particular word, you have to stand up. You have to stand, clap, and sit. Easy, easy. Stand up, uh, spin, clap, and sit. For instance, I say uh, tomato. When I say tomato, boys stand up. Tomatoes. When I say cheese, girls will stand up. When I say supermarket, uh, it means everything, everyone, not everything, everybody, everybody, everyone. And you guys from home, you're going to help me with some questions. Uh, you will respond certain questions, just not to be ignored. I'm not going to ignore you guys from home. All right, so um, the story starts like this. Because we're talking about movies, I'm going to use a movie. And no, we're not talking about movies. We're talking about TV shows. So I wanted to watch a marathon of one of my favorite seasons ever. Uh, season number one or number three, I don't remember exactly what it is, but of my favorite TV show or the second favorite TV show ever, which is Breaking Bad. So I said to my wife, uh, dear wife, if I talk to her like that, dear wife, I really feel like watching an episode or a marathon of the seasons of Breaking Bad. So uh, why don't we sit down here in our uh, comfy couch and I'm going to prepare you a snack so we can enjoy the television. And she said, okay, okay. Also, you know how much I love you, so I will do exactly what you want me to. Uh, you see, very romantic. But this is not reality, this is fiction. So <laughs> and I say, um, I'm going to prepare a sandwich for you. So what do you want on your sandwich, I asked. And she replied, um, I love onions. You know how much I love onions on my sandwich? The cheese is essential for my sandwich. And also tomatoes, mayonnaise, mustard, and you know, 
we love, and she loves all of these ingredients. And let me ask people from home. Um, Cesar, 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 tell me, what do you really enjoy in a sandwich? What are your favorite sandwich ingredients? Mm, cheese. Uh -huh. uh, uh, how, how do you say jamón? Ham. 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 Lettuce. Uh -huh. uh, but depend, depend. Uh -huh. And more vegetables. What is your favorite vegetable in, in the in the sandwich? And I am not more no no much uh, fan. Uh, ah, you're not really a veggie guy. And yeah. Okay. So thank you so much. Let me see, Julissa, Julissa Batres. Your your favorite ingredients. In a sandwich. Um, jam, tomato, uh -huh. um, uh -huh. I, I don't know. <laughs> mm. Don't you like sauce? some cheese? Sauce. Ah, oh, sauce. Ketchup. Mm. Ketchup. Ah, ketchup. Mm. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> chicken, okay. maybe. Okay, a chicken sandwich. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, we decided to go to the supermarket to have some cheese. Ah, uh, Mary. That, that, that was very slow. That was very slow, Mary. So, Mary, what is the name of the show? Uh huh. Cup, cup rock, cup for police. When did it air, um, Ella? 1990. How old were you in 1990? How old were you? You haven't even, you haven't been born by 1990. I was eight. I was eight years old. Uh, what is it about, guys? You see how ridiculous the show was? Some cops dancing while they were solving crimes. Singing and dancing. Like high school musicals, but with cops. Like Glee. How many seasons did it last? One. Only one. We don't know how many episodes did the season have. We don't know, we don't care. We're not gonna look it up on the internet because we don't care. So let's move to this one. Let me see someone who can help me from home. Um, Julio, Julio, Julio. Can you speak, Julio? If you can't uh, use your microphone, Julio, uh, give me a reaction saying no. No reaction, so maybe you're not even there. Uh, Daniela Velasco, Daniela Paola Velasco. Do me a favor, would you? Yeah. Uh, look up on the internet. The definition for relative clauses, please. Look on the internet, the definition of relative clauses. I come back to you in two minutes, okay? I come back to you in two. While uh, Paola is helping me with the definition of a relative clause, um, you guys, you here, you're gonna complete Exercise A, match the two columns here, then check the correct boxes in the grammar box. So first you have to complete this exercise and then that move to the grammar box. You have two minutes. In two minutes, I come back to you.
Okay, guys, let's come back. Uh, Daniela Paola, are you ready? Yes. Tell Do me, I please. read the definition? Yeah. Okay, a relative clause is one kind of dependent clause. It has a subject and a verb, but can stand alone as a sentence. It is sometimes called an adjective clause because it functions like an adjective. It gives more information about a, about a noun. A relative clause always begins with a relative pronoun, which substitutes for a noun, a noun phrase, or a pronoun when sentences are combined. Wow, thank you. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Thank you. Okay, relative clauses is a dependent clause. It's dependent because it needs the other clause to make sense. It's a dependent clause. It can't stand by itself. And it starts with the relative pronoun. So as soon as you have identified the relative pronoun, the rest of the clause is the, the relative one. That who, whose, and we have more. We have which, and we have a list. It's not a long list, but we have more relative pronouns. So this is the relative clause. What is the function? What is the purpose of a relative clause? Is to give you more details, is to give you more particulars about the subject. So this sentence here is adding more information about the subject. That's why they are also called adjective clauses. So adjective clauses is the same relative clauses. And we have restrictive and unrestrictive relative clauses. Unrestrictive relative clauses, they give us non-essential information. And these ones right here, the relative, the restrictive relative clauses, they give us important information, information that cannot be omitted. This information here cannot be omitted. In the unrestricted clauses, you can omit because it's additional information. It's not essential. Okay, thank you, Paola. That was very nice of you. So now let's answer. My mother, the car is about a man. Guys here. It's about a man. Uh -huh. Number one is here. Number one. Manimal tells the story of a man. Uh -huh. This one, number two. Number three, a small wonder is a show. Aha, uh -huh, great. Barney and Friends is a show. Aha, uh -huh, here. Cop Rock is a show. Yeah, that's excellent. And Jerry Springer interviews people. Serious family problems. So then let's figure it out here. Let's use the relative clauses or the relative pronouns we use for people. We use whose, we use that, and we use who. And for things, whose and that. So let me verify. No, this is the other answer. No. So no answer for this, but I know the answer. Tell me. I'm... Oh really? Where? Where did you watch that? Uh, TikTok. Hmm. TikTok. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, then let's move to the next exercise. Which sentence doesn't need a relative pronoun? Number one or number two? Let me interview people here. Uh, Guillermo, 
Can you hear me? Are you there, Guillermo? Uh, hi, teacher. Hello. Tell me, Guillermo, your favorite ingredients in a sandwich? Um, tomato. Uh-huh. And, and jam. And jam. Okay. Thank you so much. So let me continue with my narrative. So I was going to prepare a cheese sandwich. And what happened is, what happened is that when I um, opened the refrigerator, the, the fridge was empty. We, we ran out of all of the ingredients we needed to make the sandwich. So we decided to go to Super Selectors. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> But just all of you, all of you are penalized because I said super selectors and says like this first. Ah, feminism. Feminism. Ladies go first. Ladies go first. Ladies go first. Okay. What is the answer? Um Dan, which of these sentences these relative clauses don't need? the relative pronoun, so you can omit it. You said, damn it, I don't need this. Or I don't need, what is this, this one? Which one you don't really need? The first one or the second one? You said the first one. And you, Melody? Melody says the first one, you? The first one, what do you say? You don't need the second one. You don't need the first, the first, the second, and you? The first one. This one is needed. But this one is not. And when you have um, animal, is about a show professor that fights because we have the pronoun here. After, after the, the relative pronouns, we don't have the subject. If you don't have the subject here, you can omit it. But if you have, if you have this, which is the same professor, let's say that this pronoun is a different person. It's not the professor, you can omit it. But in this case, this he is referring to the same person in the previous clause. So you, you don't need the, 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 the pronoun. You don't need the pronoun here. And, and this is the reason why. I can give you 13 reasons why you can use it. About reference, it's a terrible TV show. All right. Then in exercise C, exercise C, you're gonna complete with the most appropriate relative pronoun. You will have five minutes to do this. Five minutes to complete exercise C. Please work it out. Let's continue. So we went to the supermarket to buy the things we needed to make the sandwich before we watched the movie. No, no, it wasn't the movie. It was one of my favorite seasons of one of my favorite uh, TV shows. And uh, once we were into the place, um, uh, we got our shopping list because it is, it's my advice to you every time that you go shopping to Super Selectos or Walmart or anywhere you go, but to carry a free written shopping list so you can balance your budget. So sometimes when you um, buy things that you don't really need, that they're not in your shopping list, your budget on balance. But this is not the point. The point here is that we wanted to buy 
onions, lettuce, mayonnaise, mustard, ketchup, tomatoes. Um, and we have, we have a kind of dilemma, what kind of tomatoes to buy. In, in El Salvador, in El Salvador, we have two types of tomatoes. We have those that they say, the cocina y de ensalada. Have you, have you ever heard that they say, tomate ensalada or de cocina? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to say this. Tomate. Ah. So you see, we have two types. The same happens with cheese. We have two types of cheese, three types of cheese, four types of cheese. We have the parmesan, parmesan, cheddar, blue. So there's a lot of choices going on when cheese is concerned or tomatoes. So, but all of these things can be found in the marketplace or in the supermarket. Now, I can make you fall. So let me see, um, Milena Rivera. Can you hear me, Milena? Yes. Okay, help me with the first one, please. Read number one with the answer, please. Del, see. Sí. Glee, yeah. Okay. With the, the, broad the front. Please. Cool. Glee uh -huh. is a show that features high school students who can sing and dance. Okay, excellent. Yay. Number two. Excellent. Number two. Gabriela Vasquez. Gabriela Vasquez, can you use your microphone? Gabi Vasquez. Ah, you can. Okay. Maybe Julio, Julio, are you there? Julio Villalobos. No, Julito. Mireli Resinos. Mireli, Mireli. So I will read it for you. Oprah Winfrey is a TV host whose talent made her the most powerful woman on TV. And that's a fact. Number three, uh, Melody. Uh -huh. Yes, that. Number four, Jair. Uh -huh. You have two possibilities. What are the two possibilities you have in number four? Who? Hmm. Guys, who and that? Who and that? Oh no! Sorry, 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 Daniela, you were totally right. So the problem is with me. I am the problem. Is that I did not read. Bar Simpson is a character whose father keeps saying. Oh. All right. Number five uh, is who's, who's, W-H-O-W-H-O-S-E. And then, yeah, sorry. Bewitch is a sitcom. That, of which adults and kids still watch after nearly 50 years. Uh, who's? Who's? Okay, uh, we're gonna finish the lesson here. Um, 
guys, thank you very much for being here and your participation was appreciated. Thank you. See you next class.